What's happening guys, James Blon here with Immortals.com and it's time once again for us to share with you guys the games that we are most excited to see this year. Games that we either think or know are going to launch this year or at least go into a public beta test. As always, some of the games we mentioned on the list either turn out delaying their launch or end up going by to play last minute. Black Desert and Overwatch are definitely good examples of that, they were on last year's list. So this time around we decided to make two different lists and two videos. This one showcases games that we're anticipated that are coming out, hopefully, and another list of games that we really hope to see come out this year but is all sort of up to speculation. There are a lot of games on the horizon, so let's get started with MMOHUD's top 15 most anticipated free-to-play games of 2016, starting with number 15, Lineage Eternal. So it's pretty safe to say that Lineage Eternal is definitely not the lineage you grew up with. This action MMORPG plans on bringing new life to the Lineage universe. It features hack and slash gameplay that includes using mouse gestures to activate skills and the ability to lead troops into battle. It looks a little bit like Diablo meets Dynasty Warriors with large-scale battles, interactive environments, and tactical combat, but if you think Davillion is cool, then I think you're in for a treat. Not only that, but the game is playable on mobile devices while keeping the graphics the same. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, crap, that's got it ruined right there. Well, just know that it's not a port over. The game is actually ran on server hardware and streamed to mobile devices with little to no lag, so you don't have to worry about the device you're playing it on. The game has been teased since 2011, but has made significant progress this past year and is promising beta in the first half of 2016 with a simultaneous global release later in the year. There should be no waiting for this game to port west years later. We demand instant satisfaction. On a similar but more anime note, Hero Wars is number 14. Hero Wars might not be rocking the top of our anticipated charts, but it has a few key elements going for it that should keep it on our radar. First off, it's the pilot project of the new South Korean dev studio, Ace Storm, headed by Kim Yung Jong, and if that name rings a bell to you, then you're probably an old school Dungeon Fighter Online fan. Ace Storm is actually a team from Neopol responsible for both DFO and another high action anime title called Cyphers. So with that said, we can definitely expect something unique from Hero Wars, which is an action RPG that doesn't take itself seriously from a studio renowned for going over the top without losing sight of game balance in the process. Anyone that's ever been interested in ARPG gameplay like Diablo or Path of Exile but can't exactly handle the doom and gloom atmosphere can definitely look forward to riding Free Willy into a pack of made for Saturday morning cartoon zombies with the flair that we've come to expect from anything backed by KOG Games. Essentially, it's L Sword with a top-down perspective that has a real-world story of such complicated ridiculousness that only a cast of characters ranging from a washed-up baseball pitcher to Hatune Miku meets the Joker. And if that isn't enough to set it apart, then its skill system based entirely on fighting game style combos rather than the bulky and intrusive skill bars should. And while we're talking unique concepts, Battle Cry comes in at number 13. With its over-the-top Mortal Kombat-worthy brutal action combat in a team-based PvP game, Battlecry puts 12 to 24 players against each other in a variety of game modes and maps based on a completely reimagined industrial age. Now, In this world, all disagreements are settled head-on by elite teams of chosen warriors from all over the world, with each member specializing in either high-tech ranged gadgetry or sophisticated melee weapons, but... No traditional guns. Gunpowder has actually been banned for some reason. So say goodbye to assault rifles, pistols, and shotguns, and say hello to pneumatic fists, hammers, swords, and gunpowder alternative range weapons. The cell shaded art style definitely doesn't take away from the constant spewing of blood on the screen. It sort of just keeps you locked in. The game was a real big hit at E3 last year and was expected to go into beta by the end of the year, but seeing that Battlecry Studios is part of Bethesda, I kinda got a feeling that their focus has been putting everything into the launch of Fallout 4 and just around the corner we've got Doom. I got a chance to try it at E3 and let me just say I really can't wait for beta. If it happens. This might be a game that belongs on the maybe video. This next game has done a great job of getting our hopes up as well. Number 12 is Albion Online. Albion Online is probably the top-down MMORPG that we've all been waiting for. It offers intense open-world PvP within a player-driven economy, high-quality crafting from resource gathering and trading, player housing that actually lets you own your own corner of the world, 
and insane character customization through progression, and no class restrictions, just to name a few of its features. It definitely has a modern day RuneScape look and feel, and supports a really broad PvP system, from open world to guild versus guild to PvPvE type situations. Plus, this is yet another game we see that's going to end up cross-platform, available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. The game just hit closed beta not long ago, adding a ton of quality of life improvements and PvE content. Now to be honest, one of the reasons it's not higher on this list is because of it being a prime example of the type of free-to-play games that are what I like to call found-to-play games. You gotta spend at least as much as it would cost you to buy a AAA buy-to-play title just to test out the closed beta. Luckily when the game launches sometime this year, everyone can experience it free-to-play, or at least that's the plan, for now. Coming back from last year's anticipated list is King of Wushu at number 11. Tired of squinting at sprites in mobile games while getting plastered with beautiful 3D trailers teasing your imagination for what you should be playing? King of Wushu is back on our anticipated list with some much needed optimization, plus it's on track. It launched in China as promised this past month. This game basically takes what's successful from Smite and plasters it with the visuals of Crytek and the lore and schools established in Snail Game Sandbox MMORPG, Age of Wushu, but what you get from that is an immersive 5v5 battle that won't leave you feeling trapped in unnatural lanes. Of course, you've got a roster of wild and charismatic characters unlike any MOBA before, again offering cross-platform play whether you're on the PC or PS4. While MOBAs at this stage of development always look a little rough around the edges, we feel that there's still plenty of room out there for merging shooter perspectives with the MOBA genre, especially when a game looks this good while doing it. But another game that looks good while innovating is Crossout, number 10 on the list. So the first thing that comes to mind when you see this game is Mad Max Death Rally, which is pretty much the case, but you can also build your own vehicles from the ground up. It's like you took the building concepts of Robocraft and added the realistic looking environments and garage from War Thunder with the brutal nature of the old Twisted Metal games. You've got a huge arsenal of weapons to choose from, from chainsaws to power drills, machine guns to rocket launchers, even a wide variety of gadgets like flying drones and stealth generators. The freedom of creativity here is crazy, but the best part is the advanced damage model. Destroy any part of an enemy vehicle and it will affect the machine's performance immediately, so you can turn a moving battle fortress with huge guns into a regular battle fortress with huge guns, making it a little less effective. I think it's an awesome looking game that can turn into a great free-to-play game so long as they take the Robocraft approach to their business model. I guess we'll have to see on that. The game is in a tight closed beta, but open beta should be only a few months away. Next up is one I know that we've all been looking forward to. Number 9 is Tree of Savior. Long have the echoes fallen on deaf ears from an era when most knew not what an MMORPG was. Ragnarok stood in some eyes as the EverQuest of the East, offering the first thrill of exploration, grind, and class development to the burgeoning MMO gamers that have grown into the neckbeards of today. Now the Old Guard has returned from their elven forces to usher in a new era of Ragnarok with Tree of Savior, utilizing crisp and unparalleled 2D art in a 3D environment. Merely paying homage to the era of Ragnarok isn't enough though, as they want to change the meta of how an MMORPG is played. Action combat with timing and counter between offensive and defensive strategy is key, knowing your ally's ability is key, and what's more, your special abilities aren't simply limited by cooldowns and mana, but rather a total ability counter that won't refresh until you reach a safe zone with a campfire. This makes ability use rare and once again meaningful, so when you save your team's asses with your special ability, they're gonna remember it. This is more so the case with the astounding 80 classes that are promised, some of which limited by in-game activity rather than just the grind. Exploration is rewarded, working with others is definitely rewarded, and with a focus on the path to in-game rather than the in-game itself, you can bet every minute of diving into the 100 plus zones of the world will be the MMORPG journey that you've longed for. Or at least that's what we're hoping for. We sincerely hope that Tree of Savior brings light back into the isometric classic MMORPG experience, but it's sort of a shaky road ahead. Keep an eye out as the Steam beta test is planned much sooner than you might think. Another game we're excited to see come to the West is Closers at number 8. So Closers is an action RPG currently in beta in Korea, but this year we have a really strong feeling that Nexon is going to bring it to the West. And if you haven't been following the game, it's an anime-style hack-and-slash MMO, a bit like Vindictus, but with a more modern feel and more than just a PvE instance grind. I mean, you're trying to stop the dimensional monsters for real this time. Think of a futuristic Rusty Hearts. 
Its main PvP mode plays more like a MOBA, with teams of four pushing against three lanes, and you can actually play it starting at level one. It's always nice. There's a lot of customization in the game as well, and it really makes you think strategically about how to build your character's stats and choose equipment. Closers is a game that would definitely stick out, and Nexon will probably recognize its capability to be a hit in the West and push it into beta by the end of the year. Thinking it would go into a launch date last year, Fable Legends is number seven. Previously slated for a December 2015 launch, Fable Legends is now set for a surefire release sometime this spring, but they kinda tread on shaky grounds. The question is, can Fable Legends bring the right mix of Fable and Fantasy to this 4v1 MOBA genre to prove it successful? Well, that's what we're hoping, and honestly, we have reason to believe that it could be this time around. Visually, Fable Legend rocks. This is Unreal 4 Engine at its finest, but it's the soul of the game that we feel will keep players coming back for more. Instead of a giant roster, Fable Legends focuses on deep characters with tons of customization to give you meaning to your conquest as you continue to unlock and reveal the true talents of each class. Players will have to assign their character a class when joining with three others as well, slightly tweaking their playstyle to make every match feel just a little bit different. Meanwhile, the villain gets to play an entirely different game, so to speak, utilizing RTS elements to dungeon master his way into weaving a tale of intrigue and trials for the four players who challenge him. This is not a boring task, mind you, as the villain has a wide variety of baddies nearby, as diverse as the roster of heroes. Plus, they can set up traps and direct specific strategies for the baddies, some that include focus fire suicide bombing key targets on the enemy team. Then when it's all over, everyone can join in the hub town afterwards to spend their hard-earned currency unlocking anything in the game while waiting for the next queue. This could be the next evolution of the MOBA, and Fable Legends is next up to bat to see if they've got the golden ticket to open the way to the future. Even further in the future, technically speaking, we have Dreadnought at number 6. I've gotta say, Dreadnought blew us away at PAX South last year, and for good reason. Dreadnought isn't your typical space shooter with small agile ships and routine takedowns against small AI opponents. No, in Dreadnought, you get to pilot the biggest, baddest guns of them all. These are borderline star destroyers that make your standard gunner ship look like an ant on the battlefield. Each ship plays completely different from each other, offering a kind of class-based shooter feel and can be highly customized from weapons to decals and, of course, everywhere in between. The gameplay is incredibly intuitive, honestly, unlike complex space shooters like Elite Dangerous as an example, and as a free-to-play team-based title, this is one of our most favorite competitive games on the list. If this game succeeds on its promises with already polished gameplay, Dreadnought may really break past the typically niche market. The Dreadnought team is preparing to show some major changes at this year's PAX South again, and closed beta is expected to begin in the first half of the year. Even if you don't typically play space shooters, you're definitely going to want to try this out as soon as you can get your hands on it. But one competitive team-based shooter you can get your hands on now is Paladins at number 5. In an industry of clones and copies, it's kind of ironic that one of the most original ideas to strike in a decade was initially hailed as an Overwatch clone. Thankfully, Paladins has been so receptive to welcome players into the beta test at such an early stage of development to put these rumors to rest. Combining elements of Hearthstone with Team Fortress 2 shooter battles and building off the mechanics developed for high-res moneymaker, Smite, Paladin unifies the odd elements of so many games into something that we haven't quite seen before. And the potential for what they can do with that speaks for itself. By engaging in control zone and push defend gameplay, characters and paladins are able to level up, unlocking five tiers of cards as the game progresses to push their build in a variety of directions. It's kind of like mixing itemization and skill leveling in a MOBA into one fast and intuitive package that's far more likely to appeal to shooter fans than MOBAs ever did. Combine a colorful cast of characters that seem to be straight out of a Pixar film, a fair cash shop practice, and you've got paladins. The shadow over Paladins comes with its gameplay balancing. Between characters, decks of cards, card unlock styles, map imbalance, and which potential game mode is the, quote, official one, the dev team has a serious uphill battle to find the game in a solid state. While it's a bit of a stretch to say that the game will actually be launched in 2016, given hi res's track record on that, we think it's safe to bet that they'll be in an open beta welcoming anyone with an opinion to give Paladins a test drive before too much longer. Speaking of games we hope to see in beta soon, number four is Paragon. Holy crap, what is this? And that's what I'm talking about. This iGasm is a MOBA. 
Now, while we haven't been ignoring you, we get that the MOBA burnout is starting to get pretty real, but you can't ignore the trend that whatever's working in the industry is always going to get the big investment dollars to keep it going. And there's no better example than what we've seen over the last month of Epic Games' Paragon. Merging Retina Blazing visuals with MOBA gameplay and a sci-fi shooter's control scheme, Paragon is setting out to replace the methodical MOBA meta with Twitch skill all-aimed chaos. All built on Epic Games' Unreal 4 engine, and don't mistake that for the generic Unreal 4 engine. These guys know more about this engine than just about any developer on the block, including how to get ridiculous physics, insane elevations, draw depths, and overall visuals on par with any AAA PS4 blockbuster. In fact, the game is actually launching on PS4 and PC. Stick that in your MOBA pipe and smoke it. And yes, this game is intent on drawing from the biggest unique draw of both Paladins and Gigantic, adapting verticality by including multi-level regions of the map and collectible cards that customize your heroes for combat. Players will have to learn not just to check left and right, but straight up as enemies might be taking the high ground to flank your position. Details on Paragon are coming in kind of quick, but it'll be a huge shocker if for some reason the game isn't free to play, because, you know, they haven't exactly confirmed that or anything. But if it is, then we have no real reason to doubt that this game will be a top 5 contender in 2016. Also getting points for genre innovation is Lawbreakers at number 3. This here could possibly be the next evolution of the arena-based FPS genre. Headlined by the well-known game designer Cliffy B and his team at Boss Key Productions, which also includes Tremel Isaac, an artist that worked on Fallout and was the senior art director on Planet Side 2, Lawbreakers is a team-focused arena FPS that is literally all about breaking the law in plenty more ways than just one. You can either uphold the law by playing as the enforcement unit or cause trouble for the enforcement by playing as a crime syndicate known as the Breakers. Now, the main theme of this game is centered around manipulating gravity and using it to your advantage. You can either use tethers to swing around the battlefield, jetpacks to give yourself a boost, or even rocket jump to get the drop on enemies as a way of breaking the laws of gravity. It's a really simple theme that holds a lot of potential for unique combat and gameplay modes, which is definitely why this title is on our watch list. Even higher on the list is Gigantic, our number two. Making its way back onto our anticipated list from last year's list, Gigantic is still high up on this list due to the sheer unique blend of gameplay elements, pleasing visuals, and competitive nature. While this game is described as a shooter MOBA by the team at Motiga, each hero is tailor-made to fit just about any playstyle possible, from an unstoppable tank to the ranged gunner. This one pretty much has it covered. Recently adding a new hero, cross-platform play with the Xbox One, and 24-7 access to the game the latest beta 2.0 update. The competitive nature of the gameplay seems kind of simple at first, but there's a lot of depth and strategy needed in order to succeed, which makes it perfect for those that are looking for a good competitive title. With the game's cross-compatibility with Xbox One and Windows 10, there's even more opportunities to play with friends and challenge people from all over the world. Now, the visuals alone are also worth the price of admission, which, of course, is absolutely free, as the game sports a colorful art style that is very similar to titles such as Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. They stumbled a little bit in production the last couple of months, but with so much love and support coming from the developers behind the game, we're definitely looking forward to its successful outcome later this year. And of course, our most anticipated game for 2016, mainly because it's only days away from launch, is Blade and Soul. After several years of painful waiting, Boobs and Soul is finally headed to the US and European territories, and it seems to be well worth the wait. Headlined by the legendary artist Hugh Tai Kim, Blade and Soul is an Asian-themed martial arts fueled adventure filled with fast action combat, impressive looking visuals, and well-balanced arena PvP. It also has one of the greatest character creation tools for an MMORPG in history, allowing players to recreate themselves or even their favorite fictional characters. And because this game doesn't follow the holy trinity like most MMORPGs, combat and dungeon mechanics are much more freeform, allowing for unique possibilities and challenges. If that wasn't enough, the arena PvP scene plans to be fast and brutal as this game plans to go full steam as a competitive esport in the near future. The business model is definitely a fresh and non-pay-to-win system that doesn't pick on the players that choose to play the game 100% free. Badass game with action combat, diverse classes, kick-ass customization and costumes, competitive esports quality PvP, fair business model, and boobs? I'm pretty sure that's the recipe for the best MMORPG coming out of 2016. Now many people would say that the release for this game in the West is way too late, but we say it's right on time. Good thing we don't have to anticipate it much longer. So yeah guys, just based on this list alone, we can see that 2016 is going to be a much more powerful year for free-to-play gaming than 2015, that is for sure. 
there seems to be about 40 games or so that are at least going into a public-like beta this year before we get to 2017, so just because you didn't see it on this list doesn't mean that we're not excited about it. Plus, there's going to be plenty of games that just pop up during the year that hopefully blow our minds. But thanks for watching, guys. Pick up the latest information about the games on this list from the links in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for many more like it. Stick around MMOS.com for the latest info on your favorite free-to-play games and MMOs. And until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.